Okay, so you're looking for ways to make changes to your theme, to WordPress, all those different things. And up until now, you've probably taken a look at editing different files and so on. And you may have come across the problem that when you update your theme or you update the plugin you've edited, all those changes are gone. Now, this is one of those things that can lead to a lot of frustration. But in this video, I'm going to show you the three correct ways in which you go about making modifications to plugins, themes, WordPress core, and so on. The beauty of doing it this way is that you no longer have to worry about updates. So if you wanna find out the best way of working with WordPress, making sure that you don't lose all those updates when you make changes, then join me as I take you through those three ways of doing this the right way. Now, the most obvious way and probably the most touted way is to do this inside the functions PHP file of a child theme. Now, what do I mean by a child theme? All it really means is that you have a child version that has the key files, and when you make changes to those files, for example, the functions PHP file or the CSS file, then those changes are not affected when you update your theme. So that's one way of doing it, and that's the first way we're going to take a look at. Now, is this the wrong way of doing it? Absolutely not. But there are reasons why there are better options than this. But I still want to show you because a lot of places say about doing this, and for simple updates, if you don't want to install any additional plugins, this could be the simplest, quickest, and easiest way to make those changes to your WordPress website. Now, there are several different ways in which you can approach this. The first method is one that I wouldn't recommend, which is directly editing the functions PHP file inside WordPress itself. Now, first of all, let me say why I don't recommend this. If you make a change to that file that causes a problem, you could find that you crash your WordPress website, which means then you've got to find another method of accessing that functions PHP file, making the changes, restoring it, whatever you need to do to get it back up and running, which can be an absolute pain in the proverbial. So the better way of doing it is what we'll take a look at after this. But in a pinch, you may need to do it this way. So I'm going to show you how to do it just so you know not to do it, basically. So what you do is you come in and make sure you've got, first of all, a child theme installed. You can see we've got Hello Elemental Child and Hello Elemental. So the child theme just means that we're not going to override anything in the actual main theme. We're not overwriting anything code-wise, but we will have that take precedence on any changes we make. So let's come into the theme editor under appearance. Once we come into there, first thing we need to do is make sure that you can see, select the theme to edit, making sure this is the child version of the theme that we're working with. Then you'll see we've got a couple of files down the right hand side. Now, depending upon the theme file that you're using and what child theme, you may see more files inside here, but you should never see less. A basic child theme should always have the style sheet, the theme functions, and generally a readme file. We just need to open up the theme functions, which is the functions.php file. We'll click on that and that will open up the very, very basic stripped back version of the functions PHP file. So what we're going to do is a really, really simple little change. We're going to add a function in that simply changes what's written down at the bottom of the screen where it says, thank you for creating with WordPress to something that we want. So all I need to do is come down underneath this code. We're always going to put it at the bottom. You can comment this out if you want to, so you can easily add comments like you can see at the top. We just use the little asterisk symbol and then write something after it. What we're going to do is we're going to drop in this function. And all it's going to do is change what it says down the bottom of there. We'll hit update file. We'll refresh this page and we'll find now that this says powered by WordPress, WordPress tutorials by WP Tets. So that all has worked out really, really fine and simple. But like I say, this is the way I would not recommend doing it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to undo that. We're going to take all this back out and I'm going to show you the preferred method. So we'll update that file to put it back to what it is or what it was originally. Now, I would generally say you're better off using the file manager that's part of your hosting account. Now, I'm using SiteGround here and it doesn't really matter what you use. Most of them, whether it's cPanel, SiteGround with their own sort of setup, whatever you have should be giving you access to some form of file manager. If you don't have this, you could use an FTP client and use that software. There's tons of free ones available. And it'll do it basically the same kind of thing. But what we're going to do is you can see we're in the public HTML folder and we just need to come into the WP content folder. We'll open that up. That's where your plugins, your themes, your uploads, and all those kinds of things reside. We're simply going to open up the themes folder. And inside there, you'll see all of the themes we have installed. Currently, that's the hello and the hello child themes. So all we need to do is open up the child theme. 
And inside there, you can see we've got the same three files, plus we've got screenshot PNG. That's just being used in the dashboard of WordPress as a visual representation of the theme itself. All we need to do is come to the functions file and we're gonna edit that. You can see we've got exactly the same file. All we need to do now is come to the bottom and we can simply paste in that little block of code. So we're just gonna paste that in there. Okay, so there's our little bit of code. We'll save that out, come back over to our dashboard and we'll refresh our page. And you can see there's our powered and our custom little footer section. So very easy thing to do. Now, before we move on to the second method, I'm just gonna take this out of here so we have nothing set up to cause any problems. So we'll just delete that from there and we'll hit save. If we come back to our dashboard now and refresh, we'll see that's gone back to the normal, thank you for creating with WordPress. So the next way we're gonna take a look at is to use a free plugin called Code Snippets. Now Code Snippets allows you to very easily add in things like CSS alterations, functions file alterations, PHP code, and things like that, all inside this free plugin. The nice thing about using this is that it doesn't require you to get your hands into any code or anything, so you can very easily make changes but it does mean you've got another plugin installed to make some of these changes to your site, something you may not always want to do. However, for completeness, we're gonna take a look at doing it inside this plugin because a lot of people are using this and finding it a very, very easy way of making changes to those core files. And then when things are like updated, it doesn't really matter, you don't have any problems. So let's take a look at how we can use that plugin right now. Okay, so I've searched for code snippets and we're just gonna install this now. So we've got this new plugin added to our website. We'll activate it, and once we've activated it, we'll have the option then to start working with it. So we can click to go into the snippets section, or we can choose snippets from the left-hand side. And you can see, if we choose snippets, you've got all snippets, so we can view anything we've created, add new, import, and settings. Let's come into the add new option, and inside here, we can now choose what we want to do. So the first thing we can do is give it a name. So we're just gonna say update footer. Before we take a look at dropping the code in, let's take a look at what other options we have. We've got the various different ways in which we want this to run. We want to run the snippet everywhere, only run in administration area, only run on the site front end, and only run once. Now, because our little code snippet only affects the dashboard of WordPress, we can say only run in administration area. Obviously, you could set this to whatever your particular function or group of functions is intending to do. Like I say, for this, we only want it inside the dashboard. We can then give it a description. So we can say this will update the footer info. And then we can just simply drop in that code. So you can see it's already put the PHP at the top for us. So we don't need to worry about inserting that. We'll drop our little code snippet in there. We can come down if we want to add any tags to this. So we'll just say admin doesn't really matter what you call this, we just say admin inside there. You see that adds a little tag in, which is a great way of allowing you to easily group your tags together by using, or group your uh, updates, your little snippets together by using tags. It's just a visual way of easily seeing them, what they apply to and so on. So with all those things in place, we can simply hit save changes. That will save those. And if we scroll down to the bottom, you can see it still says, thank you for creating with WordPress. And that's because we need to activate it. So we hit activate. Scroll down now, you can see there's our updated little footer piece of information. So it's very easy to use this particular plugin. We can save our changes as well. We can save changes and deactivate. We can download this, export it, delete it. So if you had large collections of different kinds of snippets that you wanted to use on multiple sites, easiest thing to do is just export these and then you can use them any way you want. We have that option to import things directly into this particular plugin. So super simple way of working. If we come to all snippets, you can see we have a list of all of the snippets, some of which are installed as part of the plugin. You can see these first five are all ones installed as part of the plugin. And then we've got our particular snippet at the bottom. You can easily update and deactivate and all those kinds of things directly inside this interface. So it's a super simple little plugin. And like I say, if you're happy to use plugins and you want to group things together, whether that's like CSS or HTML short codes and all those kinds of things you can do with this, well, you can do it directly inside this particular plugin. Now, before we take a look at the next method, I'm gonna take this plugin off. So again, we start with a completely blank slate. 
So the third way we're gonna take a look at is creating our own plugin. Now you may be thinking, well, that's a little bit complicated just to make some simple changes to my functions PHP file, for example. Well, don't worry because it's not as complicated as it first may sound. There are some added benefits of doing it this way because what you can do is you can separate all those changes and create a plugin for each one of those changes. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's say you wanted to make some changes to the way that WooCommerce was set up. You wanted to take out the filters or something. Well, you could create a WooCommerce plugin that has all those alterations inside there, all those functions that control those different aspects. Now, let's just say you also wanted to have custom post types and advanced custom fields. You could create a second plugin that creates all those custom post types, which is what I've covered in that separate video. And then you can see exactly how everything is segmented up inside your dashboard. Those plugins don't need to be updated because they are simple changes to the functions of your site. So the whole process of using those, organizing those is actually super simple. So let's take a look at how we can go about creating our first plugin. And like I say, if you want to see this in a little bit more detail about working with custom post types, I'll put a link in the description below for that first more in-depth video so you can check that out after you've watched this. Anyway, let's just take a look at creating that plugin. So for this method, we're going to be using the file manager as part of my hosting account again. Now, this is probably the simplest way of doing it, but if you wanted to create a more complex site or just simply work offline, you could do that in any kind of PHP editor or even a text editor and save the files as PHP. And then you can simply zip those up and upload them in exactly the same way as you would with any other WordPress plugin. So anyway, what we need to do is come into the relevant location on our file manager, which if we come in again, is gonna be WP content. Inside there, we want to go this time into the plugin section. And from there, we're gonna create a new folder. Gonna give this folder a name, and we're just gonna call this my underscore snippet, and confirm that. You can see that's now created a folder for us. We're gonna open that folder up, and we're gonna create a new file. So again, we're gonna just come in this time and say new file, and we're just gonna call this my snippet. Dot PHP. And the important thing is you have to put the PHP at the end of it. That tells it it's going to be a PHP file. So we'll confirm that and that will create that file for us. So all we need to do now is edit this file in the same way as we did before. As you can see, it's a completely blank file. Now, the first thing we need to do is just put in some really basic information that all plugins have to have. The first thing you need to have is the opening brackets for PHP, as you can see at the top here. Then what comes after that is some of it's optional, but I would recommend using all of this because it gives you more information when you look at your plugin section in WordPress as to what's going on. They're basically just text information that puts that information into the plugin area, the name of it, the plugin URL, a little description, which is always very useful because when you look back in 12 months time and you see a plugin, you think, I have no idea what this does. Having that little description just makes your life so much easier. So. All of that information is just basic text. There's nothing complex about that at all. Next up, we just put in that function, that same function we've used in the first two of the methods. We're gonna drop that inside there and there's our little function setup. Everything is now in place. So all we need to do is save this file and there's our plugin created. It's as simple as that. This is why I say it's not as complex as you may first think. All that's left to do is go back into our dashboard. There's our new plugin. We just simply activate it. And if we take a look at the bottom, you can see it still says, thank you for creating with WordPress. We'll activate our little snippet plugin and you can see that's now been updated to exactly what we wanted inside there. And that's all there is to creating a functions based plugin for WordPress. We can easily create multiple plugins that all do different jobs. One maybe for WooCommerce, one for WordPress itself, one for the dashboard. You know, you can do whatever you want with it. It's just sort of the sky's the limit as it were. So there we go, the three correct ways in which you can update and make changes to your WordPress website and not worry about it breaking when plugins or themes or the core WordPress is updated. Now, any of these kind of new to you, I think sort of opened your eyes up to the ways in which you could work moving forward. Let me know, let me have your feedback, your ideas and suggestions in that comment section below. Now, as always, all of the applicable links for everything I've covered in this video are all in the description, so you can check those out and find out more information about anything I've covered. As always, my name's been Paul C. This has been WP Tuts. Until next time, take care.